Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for working out with me today. I had a request for a 60-minute beginner reformer workout. That would be a great workout to do when you're suffering from sciatica. And if you're not familiar with sciatica, it's just a radiating pain that's going down the back of the leg. There's kind of a sheath of three nerves that connect and go down the leg. And so when that gets pinched, then you have a radiating pain. So that would be a sciatica, which would be a symptom. Um, usually if you have a bulging disc or you have disc degeneration or even piriformis syndrome. And what piriformis syndrome is, is basically there's this deep hip rotator muscle, the piriformis, and when that can kind of impinge into the sciatic nerve, it can cause that pain. So today we're going to work on stretching the back. We're gonna work on stretching the piriformis. We're also going to work on strengthening the piriformis because as you know, sometimes tight muscles can be weak muscles. So if we can strengthen that muscle, then you can alleviate a little bit of pain because the muscle gets stronger and it won't be gripping so much as it gets stronger. So we'll be strengthening the piriformis, stretching the piriformis, and just doing an overall full body workout. You will need a Pilates box and you also need a, a yoga block. So I have my Pilates box here and I have my yoga block here. You don't need any of them to start, so just set them off to the side. You have three heavy red springs on the machine. We're gonna lay all the way down onto our machine. Once you are down on the machine, you can have your headrest up or down. It's your choice for the beginning. And then we're gonna take those feet nice and wide with your heels as wide as comfortable for you. And just start to let your knees go all the way to one side and then let the knees go all the way to the other side. So just a gentle little stretch for your back before we get into any movement. Just kind of taking your time, just kind of settle into your carriage here. Starting to connect your breath with your movements. Just nice, easy sways side to side with those knees. Good, now when you're all the way over to the right the next time, you're gonna stay over to that right side and just hold it for a few breaths. And your hands can stay beside your hips. You could even take your hands and kind of grab the pegs for a bigger, deeper stretch here. And if you want an even more stretch, your left, your right foot can go on top of your left knee just to give that leg a little pressure to stretch through the IT band and through the side. So not too much yet. We're not really warmed up, but just a little stretch before we get started. And then if your right foot is on the left knee, go ahead and take it off and bring both knees over to your left. And we'll do the same thing here. So your left foot can go on top of the right knee if you want a bigger stretch and you're just gonna hold that. Good, just taking a second here to give your back a stretch. And then if the leg is on the le other leg, if the left leg's on the right, you can take it off, come back to the center. Now pull your knees into your chest, give yourself a nice little hug and you can just rock side to side, giving your back a little massage on that, on that carriage. Just a little rock side to side and side to side. Good. And then come into the center, just keeping your spine nice and long in the center. You're gonna let your knees go away from you. And I want you just to pull your knees in towards you and start to do little knee circles. Going away with, from you together, close the knees, pull them in towards you, open the knees and pull them away from you. So you're just doing little knee stirs, pulling the knees in, open the knees and bringing them apart. So you can kind of notice that little rocking of the pelvis, just giving your low back a little stretch, kind of coming into a little imprint and then rocking back to neutral. And then coming into a little imprint and rocking back to neutral. Just do a few more in that direction, pulling the knees in, opening out and around, and one more pulling the knees in and opening out and around. Now let's switch the direction. So you'll just open the knees first. You'll pull them in towards your chest, close your knees, and then take them away from you. So we're just stirring those leg bones in your hip sockets. So just kind of warming up through the hips, warming up through the back. Good. No need to rush. You're just going at a nice easy pace, whatever feels good for you. And we'll just do that a few more times, pulling in, closing and pressing away, opening, pulling in, closing and pressing away. 
Good. Now let's set the heels down onto the foot bar, sits bones distance apart. So it's about a knuckles distance apart. Let your arms rest to your sides. If you chose to have your head rest up, go ahead and put that head rest down. We're going to do a little bit of bridging for the spine. So I want you just to do a little imprint, letting your low back gently press against the mat, and then just start to roll the hips up. Now, if your back is really tender today and a bridge just doesn't feel like it's going to work for you, you don't have to bridge all the way up. You can just do a little imprint. So I'll show that next. So if you're doing the bridge, just kind of roll yourself all the way back down. And if a bridge is too much, then you're going to just stay down with your hips and do a little tuck of your tailbone, do just a tiny, almost little tiny bridge, a little imprint, and then you go back to neutral. So you're just doing a little imprint, and then if it feels okay for your back today, then you're just going to start to roll up. So just roll up as many vertebrae as comfortable. You don't have to go super high, just go up to where you feel good. And then just feel like you're melting your spine back down. Try to release your glutes. Just let your spine melt back down one vertebrae at a time, all the way down to the mat. And we're going to do it four more times. We're just rolling ourselves up, just one vertebrae at a time, coming up to our highest bridge that feels comfortable. Remembering our neck needs to be nice and long, so you have that headrest flat. And then you're melting yourself right back down. Good. Think of a string of pearls. I know I've used that cue for 20 years. <laughs> it's one of those oldies and goodies. One vertebrae at a time, you're rolling your spine down, just like a string of pearls, letting each vertebrae melt in towards the carriage. Good. We're just going to do that a few more times, rolling up one vertebrae at a time, taking your time. Try not to grip in your glutes, just kind of stay relaxed in your muscles and then just slowly release yourself one vertebrae at a time down. And then once you're all the way down to the mat, we're going to slide to the toes, keeping them about distance apart or sits, uh, sits bones, or like right in line with your hips apart, and then open up your knees, let your heels zip together. I want you to start pushing the carriage all the way out and resisting it right back in. And now if you'd like to lift your headrest back up, you can. So whatever feels good for your neck. I always like to keep mine down, but personal preference, you're going all the way out and in. Now as you push out, think of squeezing your legs together, even squeezing your legs deeper in towards your bones. And then as you come back, just resist that spring. It's trying to pull you back quickly into the bumper, and you're trying to slow that pace down a little bit. Start to connect to your breath a little bit more. A big inhales through the nose and nice big exhales through the mouth. Now you might even feel already, every time you take a big exhale, your ribs draw down and together. Your corset, which is those deepest internal abdominal muscles, start to engage. So your every exhale thinking of that corset just tightening across the rib cage. We'll do that two more times, just going all the way out and right back in. And then we'll go one more time all the way out and right back in. Now slide your heels apart, come to parallel, push all the way out and take your heels under the bar. Lift your heels right back up and do that again. Lower your heels under the bar and lift right back up. Just going into your deepest stretch through the calves and then lifting to your highest releve. Going deep down through the heels and then lifting the heels back high. Stay nice and relaxed through your back, letting your arms just rest onto the carriage. Just feel your shoulders kind of melt down your back and connect to your carriage. After one more, we're going to keep those heels down, bend your knees to come home. Lift your heels up and push your carriage out. Lift your heels down, bend the knees to come home. You lift the heels high and push, and then you lower the heels and come all the way in. Lift your heels to press, and then lower the heels to come back in. Just giving the back of the legs a nice big stretch. Good, two more, lift the heels to push, and lower the heels to come in. One more, lift the heels to push, 
and lower the heels to come in. Let's reverse that. Go out with your heels down. When you get to the top, lift your heels and then come home. Put your heels down and go out. Lift your heels high and come in. Heels go down and you push. Heels come up and you lift. Just a few more like that. Heels down to go out. Heels up to come in. And last one, heels down to go out. Heels up to come in. Slide your heels back together. Let your knees go wide. Push the carriage out. Now slide your heels back away from each other. Pull your knees towards each other and bring the carriage in. So you're externally rotating the hips to push. And then you're internally rotating the hips to come in. And I'm kind of sliding and rotating on the balls of my feet to push out and then rotating to come in. Good. So I'm just kind of, again, stirring that hip, that leg bone in my hip socket like I did in my warm-up when I was doing those leg stirs or those knee stirs. But now I'm just doing a, a little bit bigger and we're pushing the carriage. So we're doing it against resistance. Good. Just a few more like that, opening the knees to push and closing the knees to come in. Open the knees to push and close the knees to come in. Now I want you to go out with your knees closed, open your knees and come home. Close your knees to go out, open your knees to come in. So we're closing the knees and pushing, open the knees and coming back in. And it doesn't have to be a big internal and external rotation. We're just stirring at a angle that feels good for your back. Last three. And two. And one more. Good. Now spin your feet back to parallel and come to your heels. I want you to take your right leg and cross it over your left in a figure four. And then I want you to push all the way out with your left leg only, come right back in. So now we're going to get into some deeper hip stretches, working on that stretching that piriformis, one of your hip rotation muscles that can get really tight. Now we get really tight piriformis muscles when we spend a lot of time sit sitting. So I know when I was working at a desk, actually even when I was, I had, um, sciatica a lot when I was biking a lot because I was sitting a lot in my saddle and then when I stopped all that biking it actually went away which was kind of weird but I was working out my normal work workout but then I was biking my daughter to school and so it was 20 minutes there and back and I had to do that twice a day so I was sitting spending 80 minutes a day just in the saddle <laughs> and I think that was just too much for my body do one more and then come halfway in and just hold it. And then you can go all the way in and hold it. So we're just going to hold this little stretch. And if you need a bigger stretch, you can lift your left leg and grab behind your left hamstring. Good. So I think for me, I just was really tight in my hips. And then it just exaggerated it when I added all of that biking on top of it. It was like my favorite time. I mean, biking her to school and biking back. But it just... Once I, she switched schools and I didn't bike 80 minutes a day, it went away. <laughs> All right, let's switch. And we'll take the right heel onto the bar. You're going to cross your left leg over your right. And then I want you to start pushing all the way out and then right back in. Good. As you go out, you're dropping the left knee away from you. And when you come in, you're trying to push that left knee, kind of still pushing it away from you. The more you can reach that left leg away from you, the bigger the stretch in those rotator muscles of the hip. Big inhales to push and big exhales to come in. Good. We'll do that two more times. And one more time. Now we'll come all the way into your stretch. Now watch your ankle. Make sure you don't sickle your ankle. And what that means is you just let the ankle take all the stretch and then your hip doesn't really get the stretch. So you've got to really push through that heel. Keep your ankle very strong and straight. And then you're going to get that bigger stretch in the back of the left leg. And if you want more, you take your right leg off and you give that leg a little pull.
Nice work. All right, we're gonna go ahead and release the legs. Pull your knees back into your chest one more time and just kind of rock side to side, giving your back a little release. When you're ready, we're gonna rock all the way off to one side. So you wanna roll off, use your top hand to push on the shoulder block and bring yourself up. We're gonna change our weight to one heavy red spring and one medium blue spring. And then we're gonna lay right back down for some arm work. So again, we're gonna put the top hand on your shoulder block, roll yourself down, and then make sure that your shoulders are a little bit away from the shoulder blocks. Pick up onto the straps and bring your arms to the ceiling. Now I'll come into that little imprint so your low back is protected and then pull your knees into the chest and cross your ankles. If your back is really inflamed right now and you're feeling a lot of challenge in your back, this is a great place to stay. So let's start moving the arms. We're gonna exhale, pull the arms all the way down to your sides and bring the arms right back up. Now, if you're feeling you want a little bit more challenge with your legs and it's okay for your back, then you're gonna to start to bring those legs just to regular tabletop. And what that means is your knees are right in line with your hips and your shins are parallel to the floor. But again, if that just starts to pull on your back, it doesn't feel good, feels tweaky, just cross your ankles and let your knees come right into your chest. So your low back's just gently pushing against the carriage in what's called an imprint, which is a good safe place to be to protect that low back. It's a little easier position than staying in neutral, which can sometimes require a little bit too much work. And if your back muscles are already kind of inflamed and, and it's not feeling that great, then it's always better to err on the side of feeling better and not overdoing it. Now, when your arms are back down to the sides, I want you to hold them and now open your arms to a letter V. So you're open, opening the arms to a V and then you're pulling right back down. And notice how changing the arms to that V is gonna make the work move a little bit lower in your back. And if you don't feel that, just try to focus on it. So think more of the middle of the back is where you're pulling from. Good, so you're opening the arms to the V and you're taking a big exhale as you pull from the back. So think of your arms being connected into the back as you pull them right back to your sides. The breath is gonna help you, so if things get too challenging, use that exhale to pull through the hard part. Now after one more, we're gonna take the arms out to a letter T, open the arms to a T, and pull right back to your sides. I was wondering if my box was gonna be in the way. If I gotta bend my fingers, <laughs> and then it's okay. I don't know why I put it there, but we're opening the arms out to a letter T, and then pulling right back. Now I'm not gonna cue any head lifting today, but if you're feeling up to it, if you wanna lift your head, you can always lift your head and neck and shoulders when you pull your hands to your hips. And then you can lower your head when your arms go back out to a T. Good. But for me, I'm not dealing with any sciatica today. I'm dealing with neck pain. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep my head down. I don't know how I can tweak my neck doing nothing. We'll do one more. And then I want you to take the palms to face your mat. Your hands are by your hips. You're gonna do a tricep, bend your elbows and straighten your elbows. It, I actually didn't do nothing. I went and got a mammogram yesterday and I swear when you have to turn your neck to the side and hold that position, which seems ridiculous, but that's what I did. And then I woke up and um, yeah, I was like, okay, well that's crazy. But so I'm gonna really baby my neck a little bit today cause it's bothering me. So we'll go four. They really need to change those machines. I don't know why. Anyway, last two. And one more. All right, we're gonna take those arms up to the ceiling and then I want you to set your feet down onto the foot bar. Put your straps away. And then we're just gonna be, remember it's very lightweight, but we're just gonna push all the way out and drop your heels. I want you to pull your right knee into your chest and give that leg a nice big pull. So you're giving that low back a little stretch. And then I want you to take your leg and reach it up to the ceiling and then you can bend it back in for a stretch. 
So just reaching that leg up, giving your hamstring a little release and then pulling the knee back in. Now this whole time that we're moving through the right leg, I want you to keep your left heel dropping down underneath that foot bar for a nice stretch for your calf. Do that three more times, reaching the leg and bending the leg, giving it a little pull, reach and bend, and then hold your next one straight. Now your leg's gonna be straight. If you're too tight in the hamstrings, it can be bent, that's fine. We're gonna try to reach it as straight as you can and think of a clock on the ceiling. We're gonna circle around the clock from 12 o'clock to six o'clock all the way back up to 12. So we're doing nice big knee, cir knee circles or hip circles, leg circles, <laughs> sorry. All right, circling that leg. Now, if this is too challenging, you can bend your knee and do more knee stirs like we did in the warm up. So you're doing little knee stirs. And if you're feeling that the discomfort's because of your left leg being straight, you can bend your left leg and do little knee stirs here or hip circles. Leg circles, I don't know why I want to call it hip circles, it's leg circles. And then switch the direction and go the opposite direction. So we're just doing the second side, circling the opposite direction. Good, so you have a lot of options, whatever feels good for your back today. We're trying to keep our pelvis nice and still and stable. So not a lot of rocking through your core. You're just kind of loosening up through those hip muscles and circling that leg in the other direction. Last three, try to keep your upper body nice and relaxed and soft, and one more. Now I want you to pull that knee into your chest, just give it a little hug, and then we'll switch. So put your right foot on the foot bar on the ball of the foot, let that heel drop, and then pull your left knee into your chest. You'll straighten the left leg, give your hamstring a stretch, and then bend your left leg, give your back a stretch. So you're straightening and giving your hamstring a stretch, and then you're bending and giving your back a stretch. So this alternating between a hamstring and a back stretch. Good work. We'll do that three more times. And two. Do one more. And then again, we're gonna hold that leg straight. So I'm gonna do one more and hold the leg straight. Now, if the leg is too tight in the hamstring, you can keep a little bend, but we're gonna make that clock on the ceiling and circle around the clock from 12 to six and up and around from six to 12. Remember, you do not have to make this a big circle. It can be a small circle, but you're just circling down and around and back up. Same options as we did on the other side. If the issue is your right leg being straight, just go ahead and bend that. You don't need to be out there if that's putting too much tension on your back. And if your left leg being straight is the issue, then just bend it and do little knee circles. So it's like your knee is drawing a circle on the ceiling instead of your foot. Now go ahead and reverse your direction and go the other way. So we're circling down and around and up and down and around and up. Good. I want you to do three and two and one. Nice. Let's pull that knee into the chest and bring yourself all the way home. Okay, again, roll to your side. It's very important, especially if your back's really bothering you, that the transitions are safe for your back. So you're rolling to the side, your top hand goes to the shoulder block, and then you use that arm to push yourself up. So you're using the strength of your arms instead of tweaking your back. Now you should have your yoga block handy. I want you to put that yoga block onto the headrest and change your weight to one medium spring. For me, that's a blue spring. Okay, we're gonna lay down on our side with our left ear on that block and you're going to slide back a little bit so you can stack your shoulders and your hips on top of each other. Take the strap that's in front of you and you're going to put, now I've got two loops, I'm gonna use my littler one to make it a little harder. So I'm gonna put a little loop on my thigh above my knee. If you only have one loop, you're just using what you have. Now I've stacked my shoulders, stacked my hips, and I'm thinking of a little blueberry underneath my r left waist, and I don't wanna squish it, I wanna try to lift off that blueberry. So I'm gonna start here with my bottom hand holding the peg, my, right, my top hand, which is my right hand on the shoulder block, and we're gonna be lifting the leg and lowering the leg. So it's a lift of the leg 
and to lower the leg. Now I talked about how the glute, the um, piriformis muscle, that's one of these hip rotator muscles, can be very tight because it can be weak. So this is the segment we're doing to strengthen through those muscles. Good. Now if this is too much weight or too much work, make it smaller or change your weight. Right now we're just going straight up and down. Do that two more times and then one more time. Now we're going to do more of a clam motion with your feet staying together and you're going to rotate and rotate back. So now this is going to be a rotation in, instead of a lift. So you're only lifting your knee and lowering your knee rotating open and rotating closed. Now if this is too much with the strap, you can do the same exercise just laying on your side with no strap. So you're going to get the same benefit and especially if this is too much, then and you can't lower the weight anymore, just do it without the strap. Three more to go and that goes for the next exercise we're doing as well. And two and do one more. Good. Now we're going to make our way up. So you're going to push into your hands. Bring yourself up to kneeling with your hands on the shoulder blocks. Your left leg is on the carriage and your right leg's in space. We're going to do that open like we did before, but now we're just changing our position. So I like to call this a donkey kick out to the side. We're actually more of a fire hydrant. <laughs> we're going out to the side and open and then close. Now, even though we're working through the leg, try not to tense through your upper body. Try to stay relaxed through your head, your neck, your shoulders. My elbows are pointing back, and I have a slight bend at my elbow. Good. Again, if this is too much with the strap, you're doing it with no weight at all in the same position. Now, after one more, we're going to do little circles. So I want you to open first, push back, close, and come forward. So you open the leg, you push it. You close it, you come forward. Open and push, close and forward. Relax through your head, your neck, your shoulders. Put all that work in your glutes. Nice work. Three, two more. And then the last thing we will do on this side is reverse the direction. So let's start by pushing back first then opening, coming forward and closing. Pushing back, opening, forward and closing. Pushing back, open, forward and close. Good, do that three more times. And two, and one more. Nice job. Okay, we're gonna step off. Take the strap off of your leg and put it back onto the peg. Come onto your hands and knees with your feet hanging back into the springs. Your hands are going to be on the wood in line with your shoulders and your spine is along like a table. And we're going to do a little cat stretch. Look up, roll your shoulders back, lift your chest. And then do a little cat stretch in the opposite direction, round your back like an angry cat. So we're just lifting lengthening, rolling the shoulders down your back, and then you're knitting the ribs and going into a little arc. Good. So just scooping and then releasing. Again, we're going to go into a little bit of more strength work here instead of a stretch, but if anything is too much, you can always lower the weight again and take this a little lighter. And I'm on that medium blue. If you've got anything lighter, you can take uh, the yellow would be my light spring. Now find your neutral position where your spine is long and walk your hands a little forward. So my hands are now farther forward than my shoulders. I'm going to pull my carriage forward until my shoulders line up with my wrist and hold. Take your armpits and squeeze them like I'm taking my armpits and try to squeeze them down and that's going to act activate your lats in your middle back. Now hold that there. Your spine's long. Your neck is an extension of that spine. I want you to pull your knees in an inch and back out an inch. Now to pull your knees in, you've got to do a little tailbone tuck and a scoop through your abs. So I'm doing a little scoop and a release. A little scoop 
and release. Now, if the issue here is your wrist, then what you could do is put your box on the railing and then put your elbows on your box. So that Pilates box can go along the length of the railing and your elbows could be on top of it instead of your hands on the railing. Now your elbows are on the box, taking the pressure off your wrist. Three more to go. You're going to go for three and two and one. Nice work. Let's come back and take a little rest pose and a child's pose. So the reason I like to do abs, of course, because the stronger the abs are, the more they're going to support our back and abs are just important for everyone. <laughs> so you've got your little ab segment. All right, we have our second side to go with laying down. So I want you to lay on your right side this time. So you're laying on your right ear on the block. You're going to stack your shoulders, stack your hips. Don't forget you've got a little blueberry underneath your right rib cage. Try to lift off so you don't smash it. Take your top, your top leg and put it in the strap in front of you. I'm putting it in my little loop. And then again, we're going to line our hips up, line our knees up, and line our feet up. And then we'll start by just lifting the top leg up and lowering it right back down. Same thing as we did on the other side. If this is too much work for you, and if your back is not feeling it here with the strap, you can do the exact same exercise with no strap. And you're just going to work on lifting and lowering. And lifting and lowering. A band might be good here as well, one of those loop bands around your thighs if it's too much with the strap, kind of a middle way. Do one more lift and lower, and then we're going to go into the clamp. So your feet stay together and just your knees open and close. This is going to be a little more challenging. This is a smaller area we're working. So you're externally rotating that left leg, opening it up and closing it, and opening it up and closing. And this is my weaker side, which is very interesting because this is my tighter side. So we talked about the correlation. Sometimes weak and tight go together. Kind of makes sense if you think about it. If a muscle is very weak, it's going to grip because it needs to hold on. It's afraid of overstretching because it's weak. And if we can strengthen it, it'll let go. Good. Now I want you to take the whole um, one more time and then we're going to take everything up. So I want you to come all the way up and then your hands are going to go on the shoulder blocks. Your right knee is on the carriage and your left leg is hovering in space. We'll go into that fire hydrant, opening the knee and closing. Now make sure you're not tensing up through that upper body. Your shoulders are relaxed, your elbows are pointing back, and you have a little bend at your elbow. Same thing here. If this is too much, you can do this without the strap. We've got a nice stretch coming up in a moment. Another good glute stretch, piriformis stretch. Now one more, and then we're going to go out, push the carriage, bring the knee back, close it, and come forward. So you open it, push, close, bring it forward. Open, push, close, and forward. Take your time trying to make these circles very slow, controlled, and as big as comfortable for you. Good. Three more in this direction, and then our last thing is going to be the other direction. And if your right leg is on fire, it's meant to be. That's your stability leg. Let's go the other way. So we're going to go back, open, forward, and close. Back, open, forward, and close. Nice work. Three more in this direction. And two. And one more. Good. Now let's come down and take that strap off. Okay, back to little cat cow. We're going to come back into the center. Your hands are going to be in line with your shoulders on the wood. Your knees are in line with your hips. And you're going to start with that scoop in and back out. Now I, what I was talking to you about before, if your wrists are the issue, then I'm going to show the next exercise 
with the box. So if that was you and you're having an issue with the wrist, you're going to take your straps off, keep doing your cat and cow, <laughs> why I get mine set up, so you're still doing your cat and cow, stretching that back, and then we're going to come to neutral. Now both hands are going to stay on the railing, but we're going to move them a little farther forward in line of, of the shoulders, and if the wrists were an issue, you're going to put your elbows on the box. Your knees are going to turn to the right, your toes will turn to the left, you'll pull your shoulders in line with your wrist. In this case, I'm on my elbow, so my elbows are in line with my shoulders. And we're going to pull forward and back, little scoop through the abdominals. So I love this modification for the wrists because sometimes just holding that wood can be a little bit too much. And there's no need to suffer through something if you can get a bigger benefit being on your elbows and get more work than trying to just suffer through the exercise with your wrist really bothering you. Good, so it's that tuck and scoop and back, tuck and scoop and back for three and two and one. Now let's come back. Take a little rest, turning the toes back to the foot bar and pushing into a little child's pose. So again, you can try both, see which one you like, either the hands on the wood or the elbows on the box, because we have the second side to go. So we're going to turn the knees to the right, toes to the left, excuse me, knees to the left, toes to the right. Either if you're on your hands, they're four, far forward of your shoulders, and then you pull the carriage forward. If you're on your box, you're on your elbows, and your knees will go back you'll tuck and scoop for it. So I'll do this one on my hand so you can see the difference. Pretty much what we did the very first exercise. So all three of these can be done on your elbows as a good modification for your wrist. It's the thing I love about Pilates. It's really accessible for everyone. Everything can be modified. Three more to go. Keep connecting to those lats by squeezing your armpits down. After one more, you'll turn the toes back to the foot bar and take a little stretch. Okay, now if you didn't have your box on the railing, we're going to grab it. So either, either way, I want you to grab your box and put your box on long position. Good. And then if you took your straps off your pegs, go ahead and put them back on. I want you to come all the way over here to the foot bar side of the machine, and we're going to do another pair form of stretch. So I want you to take your right foot and put it onto the foot bar. Now everyone's a different height. I know I think everyone's 5'10 like me, but if this foot bar is too high, you can always bring it down. And if it's still too high, you can elevate yourself on a little moon box, or you can do this seated crisscross applesauce. So I want you to lean forward as much as you need to get a stretch that works for you. And then when you've gone as far as you can, you're going to hold it there. Now you might even bring your arms to the box and kind of lean over the legs. Now I feel like I, I blamed my um, getting my mammogram on my neck on getting my mammogram. But then this morning, my neck was kind of tweaky and I decided to pull uh, <laughs> go run with my son. I'm, I don't run, but I walk. We were walking and then we just started sprinting. So that's probably a part of it too. Um, so it's probably not all the mammogram. <laughs> and then I decided that's probably not a good thing is to sprint with a 13 year old. And then let's come all the way up and we'll switch sides. So don't go past your edge like I did today. I'm going to see if I can find a massage this afternoon. All right, so we're going to be standing nice and tall with your left leg on the foot bar. And again, getting that big rotation through the hip. And you can go forward as far as comfortable. And I say as far as comfortable because there's no point in going farther into a point of pain because the way your body's going to work is if you go too deep into the stretch, it's going to recoil. So there's no sense in it. So you're just going to kind of go as far as comfortable. And then your body's going to slowly, slowly unwind. And then you just give it time and you can come forward into a stretch that feels good. Okay, from here we will make our way up and then you're going to put the foot bar down. 
Let's lay on our box facing our tower, kind of right at your brawl line. So I'm going to go ahead and lay onto my box. Now for me, my back is always a little tweaky, so I bring my feet apart and a little turnout. So if that's where you are today, I'd recommend that. If not, you can have your heels together. That's just too much for me. So my legs are apart. My hands are going to reach down as far forward as I can, and I'm a little bit flexed over the box, letting everything kind of release. So just take a second where your whole body just rests over the box. This is your flexion. You're just kind of flexed over the box. Now let's start to put some energy in the legs. Push your pubic bone down into the box. Reach those legs long. And then right at the armpits, try to connect to the armpits again and start to pull with your straight arms and lift your chest forward into a little cobra or baby back bend. Now your neck is a natural extension of your spine, so you shouldn't be looking up. I can't even do that right now, actually. So don't be looking up, just kind of looking towards the tip of the nose and you're holding, connect to your lats by squeezing your armpits down your waist. Don't tense through your bottom, but push your pubic bone down, reach your legs long, you're just holding this, and then you're going to melt yourself slowly down and release into where everything just relaxes. Just let it all go. We're gonna do that two more times. So you're going from this point of complete relaxation and then you're gonna to start to energize your legs, push your pubic bone down, activate those lats, pull right at the armpits, and start to add your little back extension. Now you're not holding your breath, but you're holding this extension, just holding for three, and two, and one, and then you're releasing all the way back down. Believe it or not, this is actually another great stretch for sciatica. One more, t one more time, push your pubic bone into the box, reach your legs long, pull with your armpits, and start to lift, lift, lift into your extension. Good, you're holding that extension for three, and two, and one, and then you're gonna release it all the way back down. Now let's just take a second here to rest and flexion, and you can even kind of rock your hips side to side and give your back a little release if you feel like your back was gripping at all. So just a little side to side rock to release your back. We're gonna add on our arm pulling straps here. So same positioning, we don't need to change, but you will go ahead and pick up your straps, hold it at the tape, and take the straps on the outsides of the wood frame. So I'm going to start again flexed over my box, letting everything release. We'll do the same extension. So push your pubic bone down, reach your legs long, start to lift your head, your neck, your shoulders, but this time you're going to pull your arms all the way back to your sides. Try to hold it and lift even higher. Release yourself right back down and let everything release into your flexed position. We'll do that just a few more times. So... Sorry, I've got to move my mic because it's like <laughs> grinding into my hip. All right, here we go. So you're going to push your pubic bone down, reach your legs long, lift your sternum, reach those arms way back, push the crown of the head to the front of the room. Remember, you're not looking up. You're extending your back, not your neck. And then release everything right back down and let everything go just into your flexion. And we've got one more to go. Push your pubic bone down, reach your legs long, lift your sternum, reach your knuckles to the back of the room. We're going to hold this one up and go into a tricep. Bend your elbows, push and press it straight. Do that again. Bend your elbows, push and press it straight. Keep lifting your sternum. Keep rolling those shoulders down your back. <sighs> Three more to go. You have, you have three and two and one. Beautiful job. Go ahead and release all the way down. Put your straps back onto your pegs. And then again, you can just kind of let your hips shake side to side and give your back a little release. Good. From here, we're going to slide off of the box, put our elbows on the box, stand on the floor, and do a little cat stretch. Round your back and arch your back. So you're just doing a little cat stretch. 
I love to do that. Anytime you do extension, it's really good to flex your back. It's really healthy for your back. You're going to bring blood flow back into your back. Good. All right. From here, we have a few changes to make. I want you to take your box, turn it short box position, but we're going to place it about two inches from your springs, and then your foot bar is going to go up. All right. I know I probably look a mess. <laughs> it's okay. I'm working out. All right. Let's turn to uh, put our right side closest to the foot bar. Your right leg is sitting in a mermaid and your left leg is just reaching down. So I kind of like this mermaid as an easy um, position to sit in versus sitting down on the box. So this is a little bit easier mermaid to sit in. Your left hand is going to grab the strap in front of you and then I want you to interlace your fingers right at your sternum. Now be careful the elbows stay relaxed and the shoulders stay relaxed. You knit your ribs and pull your abdominals in. I want you to twist your rib cage to the right and then bring it back to the center. So you're ro rotating your torso and then rotating it back. Really good. Just a twist through your torso and back. And if you're feeling any discomfort in your back or pain in your shoulders at all, you can bring your arms a little bit lower. So for me, it's more the neck today. So I'm going to go a little lower with my arms as I twist. Good. This is not about the arms. Remember, this is about the core. So the arms can be low and you're still going to be twisting from your torso. When you're over to the right the next time, you're going to stay there and do little pulses one inch over, one inch back, one inch over, one inch back. So little tiny pulses. Good work. I want you to do three and two, and one more. Good. Let's come back to the center and put that strap away. Now take your right hand to the foot bar, a little in front of your shoulder. Take your left arm out to the side, and then come all the way into a mermaid stretch. So you're going to need a big lean into your stretch. Believe it or not, the way we're sitting is still giving that piriformis a nice stretch, and those hips a nice stretch. Now your left arm is going to go down to the foot bar. You're going to rotate your spine and give yourself an even bigger release through that entire left side. Bring your right hand back to the center. Turn yourself back to your mermaid. Bring yourself home, letting the carriage come to the bumper, and then take a counter stretch the opposite direction. Good. Giving that right hip a little release. All right. Let's come up and face your tower. So a little bit more back work, and then we'll move to the other side, and then we've got feet and straps. So pick up your straps. I'm going to grab my little loops, and if you don't have little loops, just choke up if you need more resistance. And then I'm going to take my arms and open them out to the letter T, holding for a moment, and then release the arms forward. Again, if you're feeling anything in the neck, go a little bit lower with your arms so that you're not working the traps. Those trap muscles are kind of like the pick me muscles. They want to be picked first. They want to do all the work. Those are the muscles that elevate your shoulders and turn your shoulders into earrings. So we're trying to turn your traps off and try to work through the middle of the back, opening the arms out and holding, and then releasing forward. Nice work. Do three more times. And two more times. And one time more. Good work. All right, from here, let's go ahead and cross the straps. Pull your elbows right into your waist. Your right hand's holding the left strap. Your left hand's holding the right strap. You're going to hinge your, your arms open and rotate. So kind of like we did that external rotation with our leg for the clams, you're doing the same thing with your arms. Elbows are just staying very tight in towards the ribs. You've got about an inch of space between your elbows and the ribs. And you're externally rotating your forearms. Good work. Uh, 
Nice job. Last two here. And one more. All right, feels really good. Let's uncross the straps. Put your right strap away and then turn around to your left. Take a quarter turn. We'll sit in that nice mermaid position on this side with your right knee reaching to the carriage, left leg crossed. Go ahead and interlace your fingers, relax your shoulders, draw your ribs in and take a twist to the left and back to the center. Twist to the left and back to the center. Again, if you're feeling too much pressure in your neck or your shoulders, you can always drop those arms a little bit. Hold your next one over to the left and do little pulses. One inch over, one inch back, one inch over, one inch back. This is about your torso, about your rib cage moving. Three more to go, three, and two, and one. Good, let's put the strap away and take our stretch. Left hand is going to go on the foot bar, a little in front of the shoulder, right arm to the tower. I want you to lean all the way into your stretch. Relax, especially this left shoulder, and let your left elbow slightly bent, so you're not putting any tension there. And then the second stretch, your right hand will come down, your left arm will move over, and you'll drop your chest right into the springs. And hopefully this feels as good as it is feels for me for you guys on your right side. It's a really great release. Now let's turn it back to our original mermaid first. Bring the carriage home and take a counter stretch, reaching all the way to our tower, letting the whole left side of your body release. Okay, we've made it. Let's come up and finish with some feet and straps. So we'll need to take the boxes away so your little box can go away and your yoga block can go away. And then you'll want to add one additional spring, one heavy spring, one red, and one medium spring. For me, that's one blue. And then let's go ahead and lay down onto your back. So remember, you're going to lay down and lay onto your side first, and then roll onto your back. And it's very important that once you get on your back, you kind of line everything up. Sometimes I like to lift my hips a few times just to get everything settled in a good position. And then pick up your straps and put the straps on your feet. If you'd like your head rest up, you can certainly do that. We're gonna reach the legs long to about a 45 degree angle. Then I want you to separate your toes and let your heels go together. Bend your knees into a little frog and then push and press the legs away. Now, if it feels good for you to let the knees come deeper into a fold and let your tailbone lift for a little stretch and release, you can definitely do that. That's not classical Pilates, that's not how it's taught but it is a good stretch. So sometimes we break, I guess, the Pilates rules and do what feels good. And since I do my feet and straps at the end, I just like to kind of play around with what feels good for me and what feels good for my clients. So not necessarily keeping my pelvis still and stable. I'm just kind of moving in and out of a nice release, a little imprint and then a push back. So I'm getting a little kind of release of my back every time I come in. Now I want you to do one more of those and then we'll keep the legs straight, go back to parallel and then come straight up and straight down. Good. And here you can focus on keeping that pelvis neutral if you'd like, where you're not moving from the head to the hip, so you're going a little bit smaller range of motion. So almost if you want to think about that blueberry under the small back, when you go up, you're not going to smash your blueberry. If you want to smash it and take a little stretch, you can gently smash it and then come back down.
good. When your legs are down the next time, we're going to open them and go into a nice circle. So I want you to open your legs, come up and around, and all the way back together. So we'll do that again. You'll go down with your legs together, and then you'll open your legs, come up and around, and all the way back together. Just doing that a few more times in this direction. And then when you get to the ceiling, let's reverse and go the opposite direction. So you're going to open, pull down and together, and then go right up the middle. And we'll do that again. So you're going to open, pull down and together, and go right up the middle. Good work. Just starting to reconnect to your breath if you've lost that. So nice big inhales and exhales. You can pay attention to what's happening in your pelvis and what's happening in your hips. Think of that big stretch and release every time you do that circle. And then we're going to go one more time. We'll bring the legs up to the ceiling and pause. Reach up for the tape and just hold on to the tape. Now I want you to bend your right leg nice and deep, kind of pull it into your chest, and then pull with just your left leg, giving that left leg a hamstring stretch. So I'm just pulling on the tape of the left side, and I'm pulling my left leg closer towards me to release that hamstring. And then I want you to let your left leg go out to the left. Let your right leg go to the right, but your right leg is bent. You might even take your right hand and kind of push into that hand to kind of open it out to the side. And you're still pulling with your left hand on the tape, pulling that left leg out to the side. And then we're going to come back to the center and switch legs. So I want you to bend your left leg, straighten your right leg, and pull that right leg closer to your, your left knee's kind of into your chest, and you're pulling that right leg closer towards you, feeling that release of your hamstring on the right side. And we'll keep pulling that right leg close to you, but let's send it out to the right, and then your left leg goes out to the left in opposition. You're gonna try to stay grounded through both sits bones, or those back of your hips, the posterior iliac crest, so those little two points in the back are trying to push equally, keep both of your weighted up equal on both sides. And then we'll come back to the center, this time straighten both legs, pull on both of the tapes, and then take the legs wide and pull both of the tapes down. And then we can bring the legs back to the center, bend your knees and bring the soles of the feet together. Now, if you have your toes, you can take your straps and then just kind of pull them towards you to give your low back an even bigger release. But another option would be your toes pointing to the foot bar into a bigger kind of hip flexor. This might be too much of an anterior tilt for your pelvis. So if you feel like you're tweaking your back at all here, then you can always um, stick with the first option with the toes facing up. Take one more big breath. Let it all go. And let's take the straps off of the feet. Put your straps back onto the pegs. Pull your knees into your chest. And let's just kind of rock side to side. Now we'll finish how we started, taking those heels wide onto the width of the foot bar, as wide as you can, and then windshield wiping the legs. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my back for my pegs here, and then let both knees go to the right, and both knees go to the left. And you might be able to remember back to the very beginning of this hour, 
and how this felt. And hopefully you're feeling a little bit more relief and you're able to get a little bit bigger range of motion and your back hopefully feels a little better too. So just a little side to side. And we will again hold it over to the right. And if you feel comfortable taking the right foot and putting it on the left knee, you can kind of push that left knee down a little to give yourself a bigger stretch. And at the same time you're pushing that left knee down, you can pull your left arm away from you and down for a little counter stretch. So you're kind of sliding that elbow down and pulling against that peg the, um, that you're holding on to. And then take the right foot off the left, go back to side to side. So just let your knees gently go from one side to the other. And then the next time we are over to the left, you can stay there on the left. And again, you have the option of putting the left foot on top of the right knee and just giving that a little pull down. Only if it feels good. And this time I'm gonna pull my right peg away from me and drop my right shoulder. Put the foot back onto the foot bar and then one more series of just side to side, one last little side to side before we come up. So just a few more side to side. And then we will finish by pulling the knees into our chest, come to the center, give yourself a nice hug and then you can kind of rock side to side. And again, we'll, whichever is side is easiest to roll off, you can roll to that side, use your top hand, push it on the shoulder block and help yourself all the way up. Now let's take the medium blue spring off. You should be left with one heavy red spring. Let's go into our lunge. Hands on the foot bar, left foot against the shoulder block, left knee on the carriage. You'll push the carriage out, bending your right knee and going into a little stretch here for the front of the body. So as always, I, I do most of my classes by request. So this was definitely a request from one of my my members, so thank you for the request. And if you like this class or if you have other requests for classes, let me know. Um, the best way to put in a request, so let's go ahead and to the, go to the other side, is on my website at aprilplankpilates.com. Let's push all the way out on this side. At the bottom of every page will be a request the workout and you can put in a request. And you can also contact me from my website or you can just email me at aprilplankpilates at gmail if you have any questions or concerns. All right, guys, but we are all done for today. You did amazing as always. Thank you so much for working out with me. I hope you enjoyed that workout and I hope to get to work out with you soon. Have a great day.